All right, so for more on this, Earl Watson joining us, and I apologize that we had to show that uh, UCLA highlight earlier, but this night was about the Oregon Ducks. They clinched the outright Pac-12 regular season title, their third in five years. So, Earl, you tell me. We, we talk about Dana Altman all the time and about how he always has his team ready in the postseason. What impresses you most about this current Duck group that he's got? Well, first off, let me say congratulations, Roz, and I said it was so much excitement on your Cardinals <laughs> beating my Bruins. Uh, when you're talking about Oregon, you have dynamic point guard play from Pritchard, a guy that's been in before. He could be player of the year in college basketball, definitely in the Pac-12. And he has the mental stamina to hit, hit big shots, take over games. He has the edge and the dog to actually talk to opposing teams' fans like he did at Washington. I just love him. I think it's very... You know, I call the Pac-12 as point guard um, conference. You have great point guards that come through, and he's been a great one. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And then on the other side, you know, we thought we were going to be talking about Colorado at this point in the season. They were at the top of the conference for a while. They've now lost four straight to close out the regular season. They go, uh, and they're going to have to play on the first day of the tournament. So what do you make a Tad's team right now as, as they head into the postseason, Earl? Uh, you can't get paralysis from analysis. So. Just play basketball. It's, it's the point of the season where you can't teach anymore. There's nothing else you can do but make adjustments before McKinley, right, what he needs to do from point guard to point guard, be comfortable being uncomfortable. And what I mean by that, anytime it's an outlet, anytime it's a still a transitional opportunity, impose your will on the rim, get to the free throw line, and if not, look behind you for shooters. So touch the paint every possession possible. Yeah, Colorado was the first team ever to win four games in four days at the Pac-12 tournament. We saw Oregon do it last year. So my last question for you, now that the bracket is out, who do you think could really make some noise in this tournament, obviously besides the Ducks? It's, it's, it's impossible to predict because the Pac-12 men's basketball is, is dynamic, right? It's March Madness in the truest sense of definition. But ASU is a wild card. You saw today in the first half versus Washington State that they, if they commit to defense, they are pretty special because they have a bunch of players who can come off the bench or who start in that starting lineup who can play off of the bounce, meaning they can catch the ball, drive it, get a piece of the paint, and make a play for themselves or others on the weak side. So that's a team that they commit to 40 minutes of defense. They could be unstoppable in the tournament. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to seeing you out here in Las Vegas next week. i got to ask you one more thing before we go. We just saw Ari McDonald was proposed to. I'm not generally a fan of uh, sports game proposals, but I, I, I like this one tonight. you have any analysis on that for me? <laughs> uh, congratulations. Uh, great job. Uh, you know, way to go, man. Way to, way to stick it out there and just go for it. But Way, way to go for it. I mean, yeah. she had to say yes, right? That's the thing. I figure if I'm Devon, I'm like, she's got to say yes. There's all these people here. Hey, I, uh, yeah, I hope she would have said yes. <laughs> all right. I'll see you next week in Vegas, Earl. Thanks for staying up with us tonight. We really appreciate it.